questions yeah but before we get into that why do we do this man man number one this is about appreciation uh, for salespeople and I actually found something uh, regarding that I found an article um, today it was in the Utah Pulse I don't know if that's a common or a, or a smaller publication but it was in the Utah Pulse uh, it was by a guy with the name of uh, Timothy Huffaker Huffaker I think Huffaker whatever it is um, but he was Man, talking. We butcher he, people's names yeah, on here. Sorry, Tim. Um, but it, it played into the exact thing what I just said about the appreciation for salespeople, and and he said you can call me account representative, you can call me customer service manager, you can call me a territory manager, solution specialist, you can call me a sales executive, but you can call me anything. Just don't call me a salesperson. And he goes on to talk about how absolutely ridiculous it is. Uh, all these different names that people come yeah. up with because they don't want to be known as a salesperson. Yep. Uh, and, and he talks about the fact that um, salespeople make up such a large population uh, of the world's uh, workforce or of the jo uh, job labor force. And, and that the reason that there might be a negative connotation is because more people have had uh, negative experiences with salespeople just because yep. they're a larger per a percentage of the population that deal that, that, with the that general contact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, but another really interesting thing he points out, uh, I think most interesting thing that he points out is that the negativity from salespeople wanting to go by salespeople has a lot to do with their own personal um, belief in the profession themselves. So right. you've got, you know, a, a doctor. Mm -hmm. eight to ten years of school <clears throat> sure. before they even begin their profession lawyer seven eight years of school yeah, yeah. Uh, before they begin their profession or a profession uh, as an attorney or lawyer uh, but then a salesperson they just walk right in and open up their mouth and believe that now they can sell anything sure uh, so if they were to treat it um, on that scale uh, to where they put that amount of training into what they did right. uh, and became that level of a professional and right. what they're doing, uh, then they wouldn't be um, almost embarrassed by that title because yeah. they would have the the backing of knowing that if they went to an eight year school for it, yep. um, that it would it would mean more. Um, you're, you're you're not embarrassed of salesperson, right? No, absolutely. That's because you made a half a million dollars last year, and yeah. a lot of doctors and lawyers don't make that. Well, and right? it's, it's funny. I did a post about that the other day um, on Instagram or Facebook. Let me see if I can find it because it's actually it's exactly that. Um, and and they're not because they've invested. You invested a lot of time, effort, and energy in becoming successful in sales, right? And they invest a lot of time as an engineer. You do as a as a, it doesn't matter what profession. If you're going to make it at a high level, there you have to invest time, effort, energy. Their schooling, um, and you and you did that. So and so in this post, I said that I'm an entrepreneur, uh, born born entrepreneur. But when people ask me what I do, I automatically first words out of my mouth is oh, I'm just an insurance salesman yeah and the reason I do this is for two reasons the first is that while it may not seem like it on these podcasts or on the stuff that I do through social media I'm pretty introverted and I, I really despise small talk right uh, so I'm really not interested I don't in, like in, in, in doing that anyways <laughs> but the main reason is I like to see people's response and in their, even their facial expressions sure. and response when you say that uh, and, and what I've seen their facial expressions say is what we've said on this podcast many times before. They're almost like, oh, or, you know, I'm, you know things will turn around. Tough racket. You know? and, and the best is when I know I'm talking to someone like a doctor or a lawyer that I know I made, you know, two, three times what they made sure. last year. Uh, but I'm just like, oh, insurance sales. And they're like, oh, man. Um, well, you know, good luck to you this year. I hope things, you know. Hope you find something that that you, know, you can make a career out of. Or something. <laughs> it's, it's like literally, it's like they immediately like look down on you. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I love it. I love it. Uh, so that's you know that's the main thing is we want to make sure that every single salesperson out there or every single person out there that comes in contact with another person is in sales. They are. We want to make sure that every single person knows that it is an admirable, uh, absolutely, uh, a way to to provide for your family. Yep. Um, and number two is we want to give you tools to be able to do that uh, at a higher level. That's right. Uh, and we want to be able to give you stuff that you can actually put into use, not just give you some fluff uh, that you can say, oh, that was nice to hear about, but stuff that you can actually, like on Monday, put into use and it affect your life. That's exactly um, right. Affect your sales. Um, and so that's why we're here. That's the whole reason. So the topic of today, questions, right? And as we, as we delve into this, um, number one, one of my favorite sayings bar none that I've ever come across or repeated is that you will live your life at the level of the quality of the question you ask yourself and others. You will live your life at the level of the quality of the question you ask yourself and others. Okay, mm -hmm. So people hear that and they're like, well, what does that mean? Well, that's not a very good question. <laughs> but, but so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about questions today. Questions you ask yourself, questions you ask others, and making sure those are the right questions. And one of the things that helped all of us, all of us in the company, mm -hmm. uh, me personally, Tyler personally, was a book that we read by John Miller. This is a great book. It's called uh, QBQ. Okay, John Miller, QBQ. And QBQ stands for the question behind the question. Right. So you have to start asking yourself better questions. You have to start asking others better questions if you want better results, right? Yep. So I'm gonna give you an example and then we can rip off of that for a little while. Sure. But this stuff's pretty straightforward. Um, so on the back here, I'm just gonna read the back cover. <clears throat> have you ever heard questions like these? Why do we have to go through all of this change? Hmm. Why? It's a why question. Why do we have to go through all of this change? When is someone going to train me? <laughs> Who dropped the ball? Something goes wrong. Well, who for dropped the ball? A long period of time. Who, who dropped <laughs> the ball? <laughs> right. That's a. These are blame questions, Absolutely. right? These are all pointing at, outside of ourselves. These questions are geared to point at someone else, right? So, when is that department going to do its job right? <laughs> Who's going to solve this problem? When are they going to tell us what's going on? <laughs> these are all questions that are are handcuff questions. Usually if a question starts with why, when, or who, listen, why, when, or who, it is a blame game question. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a question that is designed to alleviate any responsibility from the person asking them and putting it on someone else. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Here's the same questions. Now you're gonna hear us talking today and this is gonna be something you say. You're gonna say, God, that QBQ, that question behind the question, those asking better questions. Man, that's a great idea that everybody else should use. <laughs> right. What? Absolutely. You should try it first, right? Here's here's some questions. Exact same same situations as what I just read. How can I adapt to the changing world? How? It's a how question, mm -hmm. right? That's a whole lot better than a why, when, or who. How can I? Right, so there's something I used in there. First, I used the right starting was as a how. Mm -hmm. Second, I used I. Yep. So I put this back on me, right? How can I adapt to the changing world? What can I do to develop myself? Instead of, when is somebody gonna train me? What can I do to develop myself, mm -hmm. right? So now we're on how, what, and, and see I followed that what with an I, mm -hmm. right? So I'm putting it back on me, making the responsible party here, because this is about taking personal responsibility. How can I help? How can I help? Right? What can I do to understand other people's challenges and frustrations? Right? Instead of when is that department going to do its job right? Hmm. The question I ask now is what can I do to understand other people's challenges and frustrations? So it's, it's taking personal responsibility and getting in there and making something happen. In the corporate environment, this is so backward. Absolutely. I mean, you ever, you ever answered emails with people and... and they're, they're, they literally just did the wrong thing and, and they, they answer back with, you know, and put the blame off somewhere else. It's unbelievable. Nobody wants to take responsibility. So this is all about taking personal responsibility. How can I become part of the solution? 
You have the how, the what, right? How and what questions. These are how you take responsibility. You follow those with I, right? How can I, what can I do to excel at my work? So anyway, those are the exact same type of questions, except now you infuse personal responsibility for them and you take the handcuffs off and you actually are able to then do something about it, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's my... And, and what's interesting is, as you read through this book and as you really start start thinking about what you're thinking about or start thinking about what you're saying, mm -hmm. you'll start catching yourself almost mid-sentence. Yep. Uh, and you'll start catching these uh, why, who wins, mm -hmm. and you'll immediately go, up. Oh, what's the question behind the question? That's right. Uh, and, and again, it's it's what, what we focus on so much, which is personal accountability. That's right. And at the end of the day, blaming others does nothing to solve the problem. Nothing. And so it puts everything back on I, it puts everything back on me. Um, and you could, some, some instances on this were almost, almost comical when we would start realizing what we were saying. And we would say like, we would have a problem with uh, someone that we were working with or working or, or talking to, and, and you would have like a question and, and, and they weren't doing something right. And you would find yourself saying it in this what, how, or, and then you would kind of get yourself, and then you would literally, it would almost be comical. It's like, well, what can I do? How can I be better at my job from you not doing your job? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like, yeah. okay, yeah. turn it around. Turn. How can I do a better job at explaining this to you so that you don't mess it up again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, but you start catching yourself in, yep. in every situation and, and start realizing that in order to fix the problem, you're going to have to do something. Uh, not trying Makes to you more self-aware, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. There's there's some other points. Um, so modeling is the most powerful of all teachers. That was a big, big, big point. So so finding a mentor and modeling yourself after that mentor is simply the best way to improve uh, whatever field of sales uh, that you're in. Sure. Stop trying to change others. Change yourself instead. Yep. Um, it's extremely ineffective to make your peers change. You can't do it. it. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Um, so if you want a change to happen in the workplace or in your personal life, you have to take, take those steps yourself to change. Uh, and that goes right into the first step point, which was modeling for others. So yep. if you then take those steps and start modeling for others what is supposed to be done, that's going to be the most effective to get, sure. way to get other people to do uh, what, what you want them to do. Uh, accountable, successful people blame no one, not even themselves. And that was something that I took uh, from it that was very That's interesting. Because right. it says when something goes wrong, it's easy to start tossing out blame. Someone else messed up, right? So let's blame them. In truth, placing blame is usually a waste of time. Instead, you're much more likely to get to the resolution you want by contributing to the solution to the problem. That's it. And, then whenever and that all has to do with what questions you're asking yourself and others. Exactly. I mean, it's it's... So it whenever you're faced with a situation, uh, question it by asking what or how, not why, when, who, or who. Yep. And then like you said, contain I uh, in that question. Uh, so if you're focusing on action above all else. That's and that was the last point I wanted to, uh, to pass along is, is putting the blame on someone else. There's no action involved. Uh, so you want everything that you do. Uh, obviously, th you're completely wasting your time if you're not moving towards a resolution of the problem. So just by speaking to that, uh, you want to do it in a way that, that brings about action. And the only way to do that is through yourself. So instead of me asking a... Um, uh, so the question here is, what can I do to get you to shave that beard? <clears throat> what would you be willing to do <laughs> in order for me to, to shave this beard? Uh, that's funny. It's not going to happen. I know it's not. Especially now that I've seen you without one. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's just further. It's just further uh, embedded the, uh, the level of. I walked in and Tyler goes, "Hey, man, you shaved your beard. You know what they call people that don't have beards?" And I'm like, "What?" And he goes, "Women." <laughs> what? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so while we're at it, we need to uh, oh, clean, clean up the uh, the. the <laughs> Dude, what are you? How's this? Uh, this glisten is uh, powerful. 
<laughs> you know, fatherhood is really becoming of me. I just have that fatherly glow. The fatherly glow? <laughs> Tyler's pregnant. <laughs> oh, I'm impregnant. I am impregnated with an excitement for this uh, topic of questions behind the questions. Question behind the questions. <laughs> All right, man. So what else? I mean, we've had we've literally had every single person in our organization read this. Yeah. Um, and we've had some That's people, important. you know, people like Mike Witcher, um, who yeah. he quotes it all the time. I mean, oh. he's probably read it 10 times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so if you really take this, and he's someone that has taken his um, performance to a whole other level. It's unbelievable. So, and it started here. Mm -hmm. That's where it started. So Absolutely. that's uh, it's impressive, but that but people you could hear this podcast and 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 actually go that, that sounds great man that's some good advice I'm gonna have to ask better questions and never do anything about it and just like we said we provide this information for free right but the price you'll pay is in the application you understand if you take this information if you go buy this book if you then apply this knowledge you're gonna pay a dear price because that's one of personal change and you have to pay a price to change personally mm -hmm. and that's our hope for you is that you'll do that right you've heard the thing people don't change you've heard that right mm -hmm. well I believe that people don't change but I believe that they can <laughs> and that's why we do this is to provide the information for you to apply and to change personally. And that's what we love. We love to see people change. I've changed. I've taken information, applied it, and changed. You've changed. And, uh, and that's our dream to see people change because when you change who you are, you change the circumstances around you, mm -hmm. right? So see, see, my circumstances, when I'm different, can no longer stay the same. They are forced to change with me. See, most people try to change their circumstances. Mm -hmm. Right, but see, they're no different. So their circumstances stay the same. Yep. You're broke for reasons. It's the easiest thing to try. Yeah, it's not very easy to try to change yourself. That's the nope. difficult thing. That's, That's right. Why people avoid it. That's why they avoid it. That's why they have a fear of it. Mm -hmm. So, so I try to change my circumstances because because that because it's so hard to change me. Mm -hmm. But if I would change me, my circumstances would automatically change. Absolutely. So you're broke for a reason. You're broke because you're because that's you. Mm -hmm. So when you change you, broke won't be able to stay around you. And when you change you, you change your perspective. True. And when you change your perspective, then the things around you start looking a whole lot different. And the yeah. things that that start looking impossible or are or insurmountable um, start looking feasible. Um, yeah. And it's only from changing you. So change sure. yourself first, uh, which will change your perspective on the situations and will change the context of the circumstances that you're in. Five years yeah, ago, five years ago, were you showing up looking for for going and looking at private airplanes? No. Have you gone with me to look at one? We have. We have. We've flown up and tested one, right? Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't mean we're getting something this year, mm -hmm. right? That just means that just means we're, it's in the works. But it, but five years ago, that wasn't that wasn't no. part of the circumstances. No. no right. No, not at all. <laughs> but we no, but no. when you change you, mm -hmm. the circumstances change. Yeah. So Absolutely. anyway, this question behind the question. Asking yourself and others to write questions. Don't forget that you'll live your law. You'll live your life at the quality of the at the level of the the quality of the questions you ask yourself and others. You'll live your life at the level of the quality of the questions you ask yourself and others. So we'll be back next Friday. Next Friday we're going to do something uh, pretty interesting. Is it next Friday that we're going to do some live Q and A? Yeah. Beautiful. So we're going to be doing some live Q&A coming up here uh, probably multiple times over the next couple of podcasts, but we'll put all of our stuff out on Facebook kind of leading up to that so you know exactly <laughs> what time. Thank you. That feels wrong in all the wrong ways. Um, <laughs> but we're going to be coming out with <laughs> a, lot, a lot of... Uh, We'll be putting out a lot of posts with the specifics on when we're going to be going live, uh, asking those uh, questions, or you being able to ask us questions and us answering them live, uh, which will be pretty interesting. Last time we gave away some Ask Gary V books. We've still got like, I don't know, 690 of them left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we we'll got 400 give, of them right there. Yeah, so we'll probably give a few more of those uh, away as well. Um, but make sure that you are staying tuned and uh, with our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash saleswolvespodcast, and click on the notifications so that you can see when we do post something because if we say hey we're going to be going live in 30 minutes and you miss it then you miss it right uh, so you want to make sure that you see that and share these podcasts uh, on facebook is the best way to, to do to do that and that's really the only form of payment that we would ask that's it um, and really only if you got something out of it if you didn't get anything out of it we don't want you to share it no uh, only yeah. if you get something out of what we do uh and then obviously 
Just did it in a weird accent, didn't I? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. He's, he's now, he's now <laughs> has an English, British he's, accent. He comes and goes. It's a weird form of Tourette's. <laughs> 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 but the QPQ, John Miller, go check that out. Uh, it would be absolutely worth the investment. It's a short read, too. You can finish it in an hour and a half. But you'll uh, want to read it again out. and yeah. again. So with oh. that, right. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds weird. <laughs>